السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Welcome my dear brothers and sisters in Islam I ask Allah عز وجل to bless you wherever you are and I ask Allah عز وجل to fill your lives with happiness and with iman Allah عز وجل in his glorious book he says أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولقد كرمنا بني آدم وحملناهم وحملناهم في البر والبحر ورزقناهم من الطيبات ورزقناهم من الطيبات وفضلناهم على وفضلناهم على كثير ممن خلقنا تفضيلا Allah عز وجل in his ayah he's clearly stating that he has honored the son of Adam and he carried him on the lands and in the sea and he provided him from the lawful provisions and he has preferred him with a marked preferment over many of the creation that he has created. There is no doubt that the son of Adam, human beings, are creatures that have been distinguished from other creation of Allah Azza wa Jal with the brain. Allah Azza wa Jal blessed you with this brain and gave you the ability to make the decisions for yourself. He gave you the ability to even go on to control other creation around you from animals. He gave you the ability to ride in the land, on the lands or in the sea. All this is a favor from Allah Azza wa Jal, which wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the blessing of the brain. Islam came to protect the brain in many of its teachings. It's impossible that Allah Azza wa Jal would leave such a, such a complex creation, such an important creation of his, and that is the brain, without guarding it and giving us guidance on how to use it. Al-Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah, he states that if the brain was a product that could be bought, many people would have went very high with the price of it. My dear brothers, you cannot go out to buy a brain. Allah Azza wa Jal did not make this something that is available for people to purchase or to buy. What is unfortunate is that people go on to abuse this great blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal and do the wrong thing with it. And from these ways is where people go on to consume drugs. There is no doubt and it's not a secret that communities struggle and suffer because of drugs, including the Muslim community. We have Muslims who could be at times drug dealers, and their name is Ahmed and Muhammad and Khalid and Abdul Rahman. And they even go on to tell the people that surround them, we are Muslims. But look, but yet despite they are Muslims, they are doing that which is opposing Islam with their actions. We have Muslims who are on drugs, who are abusing their health by consuming the drugs. I want to ask, how do such people show appreciation to Allah Azza wa Jal for this beautiful blessing of His? How, they, how do they go on to return the favors of Allah Azza wa Jal? Allah Azza wa Jal didn't give us this blessing so that we can abuse it. Rather, he gave it to us so that we can use it in the right way. There's a family of four, two boys and two girls, who lived with their parents. 
This boy describes his situation. He said, my father had a job and he was looking after us. He was a very kind man. He was a very good man. Until with time once, we noticed a change. We inquired, what's wrong with you, O oh father? Why are you so upset? Why do we find that you get into a state where you get angry for no reason? What did we do to you, O oh father? The father would respond, it's nothing. It's just work. And with time, his wife discovers that he was consuming drugs. And because of the effects that it had on him, it led to him being fired from his work. Because of him coming to work in a state that's not befitting. And after he was fired from his work, he turned to his wife, asking for her to sell her gold to provide him, so that he can go and buy his drugs. Being a lady that's very simple, being a lady with a very soft heart, that wants to keep a family together, she responded to him thinking that perhaps she can f keep a family together and with time the husband will change. So she went on to sell her gold and he used it for his drugs. And subhanallah, it wasn't very long after when she actually had nothing else to sell and he had nothing else to sell and now he had nothing to satisfy his desires. So he got into an argument once with his wife. And while they were in the heat of the moment, he takes out a knife and he stabs his wife in the heart. Now that the wife has been killed and the father is a criminal, they were left in the care of those who do not know how to be a father or a mother. They cannot be parents to them. These children, these two boys and two girls, were now separated to live in orphanages. Subhanallah. The son was asking, O oh father, what was my crime? What did I do to you, O oh father? I was a good son to you. I loved you. I did everything you asked me to do. I went to my school and I was a good boy. I'll come back home and do my homework. I would look after my brothers, my brother and my sisters. I was kind to my mother. I don't know where I went wrong for you to go and to cause what you have caused to the family. Now, I can no longer see my sisters except in occasions. Now, I am deprived of my mother because of your addiction to drugs. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this may be one drop out of an ocean out there of stories of those who had an addiction to drug. The problem is, you think at the beginning you're safe. You think that there's nothing to worry about. It's only for a short time I will take this. But wallahi, this is a fact that has been proven to be wrong. It's proven that it, was, it is wrong. People begin with such, with such justifications, but later on, they gradually build up to become of those who are now attached to it. They cannot live without it. They could not even find happiness without it. And this is a problem that we need to deal with. The reasons why people get onto drugs are many. But from the most dangerous of reasons out there is bad friendship. Many of our brothers and sisters got onto drugs after having a relationship of trust with someone who was described to be a friend. But in reality, he is nothing but an enemy in the cloak of a friend. Because true friends are the ones who look out for each other. True friends are the ones who love one another and care for one another. True friends are the ones who stop one another from doing the wrong and call one another to do that which is right. The true friend is the friend 
that will stop in front of you until you know I will disallow you from doing the wrong. Because I love you. Because I have a responsibility towards you. It happened to me once that a young boy who had some bad friends, he thought that I can just be friends with them. I don't have to be like them. He knows their problem. He knows that these people are not good people. He can see what they get up to in the open. And what is hidden to him is even worse. What is hidden is even worse. But he did not even take that which is apparent and is enough to get him to hold back. So this boy in his teenage years was once bored. He decided to go and visit his friend. So he went to his house and his friend being that generous person offers him some herbal tea. And he drinks that tea, trusting that his friend would look after him. He would not abuse him. He would not do the wrong thing to him. And he enjoys that tea so much. After it, he describes, and this is a true story. Don't think it's something that's, wallahi, and I'm making it up. This is a fact, and it's actually something that I know for sure it happened. This boy, after drinking from that tea, he felt happy. And he felt focused. He felt now confident. He felt like he's a king. He was sitting between the boys, enjoying the gathering. Now, I speak up. Now I can present you with my thoughts and my ideas. This is how they think they get a hype. They get a hype and they think they are someone because of that drug that they have consumed. So he enjoyed it and he went back home and he's happy and all that. And it wasn't very long after when he actually was coming down off the drugs. And he doesn't know that it was drugs. So he rushes the second day to his friend and he tells him, I'd like more of that herbal tea. And the friend tells him, yes. And he offers him the herbal tea. And for the second time, he feels good. He feels all happy now. And what that, and that which those who consume drugs might feel for a short term. And it's a dear price. So he felt good. And it happened again. He was coming down. The following day, he goes to see his friend requesting the herbal tea. And after that, after the third day, he comes back. And the friend who is so-called friend, he says, welcome to the club. You are now of those who like our product. What we gave you is not tea. What we gave you is a mixture of tea with some drugs. And that's how they begin. You begin with a trust. You feel that I can trust this person. And by the way, these people are found just about in every place. You have them at school. You have them at your workplace. You might even have them at times come into the mosque. They might even attend the lecture at time. At times, you think, SubhanAllah is a good bloke. He's a good bloke. So, these people are found in their different environments. And they go on to bring you towards them in a way that is tricky. They're not going to begin by saying to you, let's have some drugs. They're going to begin in ways that are, you know, uh, attractive. In a way that will bring you close. So now this friend was hooked. He loved the stuff. And they told him and they assured him that there's no need to worry. We've got plenty of this product. We've got a lot of this product. And the price we'll give you is cheap. It's good. But being a young boy, he can't even afford it. How could he afford it when even those who are older can't afford it? So he would now steal. He went on to steal from his father, from his mother, and would go even beyond his father and mother to steal from strangers. And I'll stop here for a moment and I'll ask the question. When a father is noticing that his pocket's money has been decreased, he needs to question. He should not think to himself, I trust. Because trust does not mean you become blind. Trust does not mean 
that you let your son go and do what he wants. So now this person was stealing. And with time, he got, into, it got to a stage where he realized that I can't continue stealing. When he realized that, he did not go on to leave it. Rather, now he was asking the question, how could I get this product in an easier way? They said to him, it's simple. You become of those who market our product. You sell our drugs and you can cover the expenses of your own drugs. So now this person now became a drug dealer while he doesn't even know it. While he doesn't even know it. And it's a fact. When someone gets onto it and he can justify it for himself, he'll justify it for others. He wouldn't have a problem if his friend will get onto it. So he will be in a way someone who's promoting it. So this person now became a drug dealer. And subhanAllah, with time he decides to change. But the problem is, change will come at a very deep cost. And that is, he will have to flee for his life. Why? Because those people whom he knows are people who will not leave him alone because he knows about them. So leaving them will mean betraying them. Leaving them will mean that he will have secrets of them and be free. So now they moved on to threaten him with his life. And this man is stuck. He doesn't know what to do. Subhanallah. This is what drugs get you into. It gets you into a situation where you lose control. You no longer make those decisions for yourself. You, you become someone who his life is filled with darkness. And this is what is expected. Allah Azza wa Jalla in his glorious book, he tells us, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكًا And whosoever turns away from my guidance, then for him is a miserable life. So, be of those who take lesson from what happens around and keep away from drugs. Keep away from those whom you know that consume drugs. And do not be a product to the shaitan out there. May Allah Azza wa Jal protect you and keep you away from it and your children and your friends. Wa jazakumullahu khayran. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa ala. I had a question raised to me, and that is, are there any evidences from the Qur'an and the Sunnah to disallow drugs? The answer is, there is clear evidences in the Qur'an and the Sunnah that clearly states the prohibition of drugs. And it could, it could not be that Allah Azza wa Jal would leave such an important topic unattended to. From the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal, He says to us in His glorious book, وَيُحِلُّ لَهُمُ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَيُحَرِّمُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْخَبَائِثِ And He will make lawful for them what is good and prohibited to them what is bad. This rule is a general rule that applies to everything. Everything that is good is halal. Everything that is bad is haram. Now, someone might ask the question, if I don't go take in too much, it's not bad. If I go on to take small amounts here and there, there's no problems with that. The answer is, whatever, a lot of it Islamically is harmful, the rule of the rule a little bit of it becomes of that which is prohibited. Allah Azza wa Jal, He did not disallow us from having only a lot of alcohol. Rather, He disallowed us even from having a sip of it, a sip of alcohol. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He said in the authentic hadith, كُلُّ خَمْرٍ مُسْكِرْ وَكُلُّ مُسْكِرٍ حَرَامٍ Every khamr 
is an intoxication. And every intoxication is haram. Whether it's in small amount or great amount. Also Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَا أَسْكَرَ كَثِيرُهُ فَقَلِيلُهُ حَرَامٌ That which a lot of it intoxicates you and affects you, then a little bit of it is haram. So therefore we should not have that mentality. And this could vary from one person to the other. And who can guarantee that a person can't be easily introduced to having more and more, especially when his body becomes now used to it. So from the Qur'an, the evidence is clear. And from the Sunnah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ طَيِّبٌ لَا يَقْبَلُ إِلَّا طَيِّبًا Verily, Allah Azza wa Jal is pure. He is good and does not accept other than that which is pure and good. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ أَمَرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ بِمَا أَمَرَ بِهِ الْمُرْسَلِينَ فَقَالَ يَا أَيُّهَا الرُّسُلُ كُلُوا مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَعْمَلُوا صَالِحًا وَقَالَ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُلُوا مِنْ طَيِّبَاتِ مَا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ وَاشْكُرُوا لِلَّهِ The translation of this is that Allah Azza wa Jal commanded the believers with that which He commanded the messengers. So whatever the messengers were commanded with, we as Muslims were commanded with. And Allah Azza wa Jal began with the prophets and messengers and He said to them, O messengers, eat from the lawful and do righteous deeds. And He said to the believers, O you who believe, eat from the lawful and be thankful to Allah Azza wa Jal by doing righteous deeds. So there's no doubt that consuming drugs is haram. A person may say, what if it's needed as a medication? What if the person needs it as a necessity? Then this should be treated as an exception, not as the main rule. We don't go on to generalize then the exception to make it the general rule and say that then drugs is all allowed. No, the exceptions for that person specifically will be given with limits, with limits. So I hope this answers your question. Another question that I have is what's my advice to those who consume drugs? Whether they have an addiction or whether they're not yet to that level of being addicted. My advice to them is to repent to Allah Azza wa Jal and not to delay and not to feel like they have time Wallahi, in the future to change. The dangerous thing about all this is that a person may not realize that it's actually too late. May not realize that until it's gone to a level where it's too late. So my advice is to hasten to repentance, to rush towards the forgiveness of Allah Azza wa Jal. And every sin Allah Azza wa Jal can forgive if a person turns to him and ask him for, asks him for forgiveness. Every sin, even shirk billah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azza wa Jal made the door open for those to repent from it and return to Allah by worshipping him alone. So, so long that you have that chance, the door is open. And the chance will continue to be given, not unless the person has been approached by death. And the dangerous thing is that you do not know when you'll be approached by death. A true story, this person once was consuming his drugs in the toilet and he's thinking that I would, you know, I would have the opportunity, opportunity to walk out of this place and continue my life normal. SubhanAllah, when Allah Azza wa decrees something, no one can avert it, no one can turn it away. This man was overdosed in the toilet and he died in the toilet in a state while he was prostrating prostrating towards his drugs and people did not realize that he died until they smelt a very bad smell from outside his house they were forced to break in and they found this man on the floor what a death what a death that a person gets like that. 
and he will be resurrected like that on the day of resurrection. May Allah Azza wa Jal protect us from that. So my advice is to repent to Allah, to seek advice. There's nothing wrong. Even if you are a Muslim, there's nothing wrong with seeking advice of the experts, even if they are non-Muslims. Some of our brothers, they have this love for their deen. Despite their addiction, they have their love to their deen where they feel the pride. They feel like, how can I as a Muslim go and present myself in front of a non-Muslim saying that I have a drug addiction? They feel like, how am I going to present my deen? And I say that's a good feeling. It's a good feeling that you are concerned on how you present your deen, even while you are sinning. But we have to really weigh things in a better way. We have to weigh it in a way that is more accurate. What I mean by that? You might choose now to go and seek advice, seek medical advice, and it's done in a professional way. And there are medications and there are courses that will help you overcome and be in control of your addiction where you are now presented as a Muslim who wants to take control. Or you can be in that situation where you are forced, forced into that place while you still refuse to take control. You could be forced in a hospital one day, you never know what happens. You could be forced and now you do have that person on top of you and he's looking at you and saying, what a religion, what a religion. Now you'd rather go in there in person and say, I'm a Muslim and I know this is wrong and this is not from the teachings of Islam and I want to make a change. I want to make a change. That is way better than the other scenario. So I, I advise my brothers and sisters who have this problem to go on to seek the medical advice. From the advices I give to them is not to justify it. Don't Justify the haram. Justifying the haram and making the unlawful lawful is a greater sin than consuming the drugs. So don't go on to increase the burden on yourself. Where now you have multiplied and multiplied sins. Have this in your heart that I'm doing the wrong. I'm doing the haram. Have this in kisar. In front of Allah Azza wa Jal, the humiliation in front of Allah. We say, Ya Allah, you're not deserving of being disobeyed. You deserve to be obeyed, Ya Allah. You don't deserve other than that which is good. And I'm the one who is weak here. I'm the sinful one here. Oh my Lord, aid me and help me. Turn to him in that way, but do not justify the haram, the unlawful, and make it lawful. And most importantly, besides to that, do not go on to promote it to others. When you go on to promote it to others, you carry not only your sin, but the sin of everyone out there that listen to you. Don't show pleasure. Do not show pleasure towards this sin. Even if you experience a short-term pleasure, do not go on to make it something appealing for someone else. Because by you feeling good about it and showing people that, you know what, I'm feeling good, I'm enjoying it, you are marketing for this. You are giving them an encouragement to do the haram. And that in itself is another sin. And do not be of them. From my advices, to this person who has this problem is if he comes from a family I advise him to abstain from doing any of this haram in his house how shocking is it how dangerous is it when a father is smoking the marijuana in his garage with his mates playing cards how bad is that? How bad is it when that youngster is sitting in his bedroom and he's smoking it and the smell of it can be smelt from the outside? They think 
that they are they have gone unnoticed but little did this person realize that the smell of this has now become widespread to the extent that even if someone's walking on the street who is a non-muslim or a muslim is thinking these people smoke that's an example of the marijuana and the same thing goes to other products do not don't you dare don't you dare bring it into your house and remember that the barakah of Allah Azza wa Jal is needed at all times you need the barakah of Allah Azza wa Jal in your wealth you need the barakah of Allah Azza wa Jal in your health you need the barakah of Allah Azza wa Jal in your family you need the barakah of Allah Azza wa Jal in your household you need the barakah of Allah Azza wa Jal with your relationships with people when you have the barakah you have the joy you have that which continues it's never ending so when you go on to take this remember remember straight away am I doing that which causes me to gain the barakah the blessings of Allah Azza wa or not especially when you're in your home people ask the question why did my younger brother end up in the wrong path because once upon a time his older brother was a very bad example once upon a time that young that younger brother walked in and found his brother doing something with his friends and he felt like if my older brother's doing that then I might as well do it he had no resistance towards it so my advice bring it away from your homes bring it away from your homes and I say finally Wallahi, the price is very deep. At times, the price could be way beyond what you could imagine. If it meant that you will have to flee out of your state, out of where you live, to another area to protect yourself and your family, then do it. Then do it. When you know that you have a younger brother or a son, or you have a problem, and the way to get away is to move to another place. Wallah, it's worth it. It's worth it to the last bit. And Allah Azza wa Jal will aid this person. So this is my advice. I hope it was beneficial. Wa jazakumullahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum.